Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at exam focus on algebra of skills. So, example one. The diagram shows triangle ABC, where AB is 2x plus 1, AC is 2x minus 1, and BC is 2, 7. Angle BAC is 60 degrees. Work out the value of x. Okay, so, uh, when you've got questions like this, quite often the text repeats what's obvious from the picture. So it's quite safe to ignore all the text in the question and just focus on what it's asking. It's asking for the value of x. Okay, I've given you some hints now. I would like you to try this yourself. So I think what's best for you to do is pause the video now and see how far you can get with this question. You will be using the cosine rule. So pause the video, have a go, and press play when you're ready. Okay, so my answer. Well, I'm going to use a cosine rule because it is a non-right angle triangle, and we cannot use a sine rule because we're only interested in one, uh, one angle. Sine rule, you would need to be interested in two angles. And so we're going to start substituting A, B, and C into this, like this. And we get this expression here, and this is complicated. This is a complicated equation. And so my tips for this will be simplify first, working carefully to avoid small mistakes. A small mistake will completely ruin uh, your answer. The most common mistakes is issues with your positive and negative signs. So, for example, if you're multiplying two negatives together, make sure it's a positive, and just keep track of that because it's easy to forget when you're doing lots of algebra. And practice is key. So do a lot of questions like this and you'll get more fluent with your algebra. Practice makes perfect. Okay, so let's have a go. So the, let's start with the two root seven squares. On the calculator, that is just 28. Now I've also got cos 60 here and cos 60 is one half. So we can replace the cos 60 with a half. This is quite common in questions like this, where you will see the angle is labelled 60 degrees because uh, cos 60 is such a simple answer. And it says 2 times 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 times a half. So you're multiplying those brackets by 2 and then halving it, which cancel out. So the 2 and a half cancel and we're left with this. And already the question is looking a lot simpler. So now we're going to expand the brackets, we get uh, this, I'm going to start expanding. We get the first set of brackets is 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Then the next bracket, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Expand it as a double bracket. So when it said 2x plus 1 squared, you write it as a double bracket. And we get this. And the final bracket, we are subtracting the 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. And so you have to be really careful when you are subtracting this. because So you expand the brackets first and then put them all negative. And so I write it in a square bracket once I've expanded it with a minus sign in front, and this helps me remember that I am indeed uh, subtracting everything. And so I subtract everything, the minus 4x, and then the minus minus 1 becomes plus 1. Again, it's looking a lot simpler now. I just have to tidy things up. So let's look at the 4x squared, the 4x squared, and the minus 4x squared. Simplifies to just be 4x squared. Minus 4x plus 4x cancels out, and it'll be 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is, of course, 3. Again, this is far simpler. I can take 3 off both sides, I get 25 equals 4x squared. I can divide by 4, and I can square root. When I square root something, I get two answers. Uh, x is either 5 over 2, or x is minus 5 over 2. However, in the context of the original question, the uh, negative x would give a negative length. So the value of 2x minus 1 or 2x plus 1, if x was minus 5 over 2, would be a negative number. And negative lengths make no sense. So we're going to ignore that answer and only use the positive value uh, as the correct answer. That's quite a common thing in exam questions. You have to 
when you get a quadratic or you get two answers, you have to choose a sensible answer from the context of the question. Okay, so that's example one. Let's now look at example two, and this is about algebraic fractions. And to solve this one, you'll have to use a common denominator because you are adding or subtracting fractions. Okay, so again, pause the video and see how far I can get. Can you solve this entire question? When you're ready, I'll show you the answers. Okay, so we'll start by factorising the top and the bottom of these fractions. Always a good idea when you've got algebraic fractions, factorise the top and the bottom. And we need to make common denominators. Uh, so to make the first one, a common denominator, we'll multiply everything by x minus 1. And for the second one, we'll multiply everything by 2. And that gives me a common denominator of 2, x minus 3, x minus 1. We can now look at subtracting the numerator of the fractions. And we can combine it into one fraction where we've subtracted the numerator. We expand the top, being very careful about our negative numbers. And then we simplify. And we get 3x minus 9. Okay? Take a moment now and just check you're happy with everything I've done so far. If you need to pause the video and catch up, that's okay. Okay, let's continue. So we're going to factorise the top and I get a common bracket of x minus 3. So you can cross the x minus 3 on top and bottom. And that's like I'm dividing the top and the bottom by x minus 3. And I'm left with this. I can get rid of the... Uh, this is now a simpler equation and I can get rid of divide by x minus 1 by multiplying by x minus 1. I can also get rid of divide by 2 by multiplying the other side by 2. And I get this which I expand, I move the minus 4 to the other side, and then I divide by 4 to get rid of the 4x, and you get this. 7 quarters is equal to x, and that's the final answer. Did you get that correct? Let me know how well you did in the comments below. Okay, example 3. This is a doozy. This is a very, very difficult exam style question, and it's probably one of the most difficult GCSE questions I've ever seen. It says the diagram shows a solid cone and a solid sphere. The cone has a radius, base radius of R, a slant length L, and a perpendicular height H. The base radius of the cone is equal to the radius of the sphere. The volume of the sphere is K times bigger than the volume of the cone. Show that the total surface area of the cone can be written in the form pi r squared times k plus square root of k squared plus a over k, where a is some constant to be found. When it says a is some constant to be found, we need to find what a is. a will have a very specific value, uh, and we're going to try and find what a is. Okay, looks quite overwhelming, but let's take it step by step and see how far we get. You might want to pause the video now and see how well you do. But if you just want to watch, let's go. All this stupid job are here, we can ignore. So we uh, get rid of that. And we've got this here. Now, uh, the, uh, we're going to focus on the volume of the sphere and the volume of the cone, which are given by these equations here. Volume of the cone is a third pi r squared h. And volume of the sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And we know that the volume of the sphere is k times the volume of the cone. So you get to multiply the volume of the cone by k to find the volume of the sphere, and we get this equation here. We can get rid of divide by 3 by multiplying by 3. So that sorts out those weird fractions. Uh, we can get rid of the multiply by pi by dividing by pi on both sides. And so you see how we're simplifying these, this equation by cancelling out the things that are the same on both sides. We've now got an r squared on both sides. We divide both sides by r squared. The r cubed divided by r squared is just r. So kh equals 4r. And we'll divide by k to get h is equal to 4r. And this is useful because look at the final equation we want, uh, that expression we want from the equation. And we don't want any h's, we want r's and k's. And so uh, it's nice to have h replaced by r's and k's. 
Now let's look at the surface area of the cone. The surface area of a cone is given by this uh, area of a circle and the curved surface area of a cone. Okay, and you add those together and you get this equation here. The curved surface area of a cone is given in your formula booklet. Now let's just remember our objective. We want to find an expression only with k's and r's. So look at our surface area of a cone here. It's got pi r l. So we've got an L there that we don't want in the final equation. So I think it makes sense to find an equation expression for L and substitute that into this expression here. So L can be given by Pythagoras theorem because this is a right circular cone and the radius and the height make a triangle with the length, a right angle triangle. So L squared is the same as R squared plus h squared. We square root both sides and we get this. We can now replace the h with our equation that we found in the first part, r squared plus 4r over k squared. Okay, let's try and manipulate that to make it look like a part of expression. We expand the 4r over k squared, we get 16r squared over k squared. And we can factorise out an r squared here. So there's an r squared in both those parts of the square root. We can factorise that out. Now the 1 uh, can be written as k squared over k squared to make a common denominator to add these fractions in the bracket. And that means that when we add those fractions in the bracket, we can write it like this. r squared over k squared uh, times k squared plus 16. And so I've taken a denominator of k squared out of that bracket, and it looks like this. That's a lot of algebra there, and you might want to take a little moment to make sure you understand all my algebraic steps to get to this. Again, this is very difficult. This is uh, why it's such a hard grade 9 GCSE question. I'm going to keep going, so I'm going to... Uh, distribute the square root, the square root can be over those two things multiplied together, and the square root of r squared over k squared becomes r over k. And all this algebra here was to make it look like, to replace the l in the equation, and to make it look like the equation we wanted. So we wanted k squared plus something. And we've got k squared plus 16 here, and so I have a feeling the a in the final equation might be 16. We substitute that in, like this, so we replace the L with this expression we found. We simplify the R times R is R squared. And we factorise out a pi R squared out of both of these. See how there's a pi R squared in both those uh, uh, expressions there. It's looking good, we're almost there. Uh, now we make a common denominator. So the K over K and the 1 over K. Uh, it can be added together. It was 1 plus 1 over k before, now it's k over k. And we can write that as the expression we wanted in the original expression. And so therefore, if you compare these two expressions, a is 16, and we have indeed answered the question as required. Okay, let's just reflect on that because that was very, very hard algebra. So step one, we use the information about the volumes to find a simplified expression for h. And we did that because we wanted to replace the h's in the vo uh, surface area equation um, in the end. Then step two, we used Pythagoras' theorem on the cone to make an equation for L. And we did a lot of simplifying to force it to look like something where it's square root of k squared plus a. Because I just knew the square root would be that square root part in the surface area equation. It just felt right. So I wanted to force it to be k squared plus something. And that's what the algebra manipulation is there. Step four, we substituted it into the expression for surface area. And we simplified a lot. And we forced it um, to look like the expression we wanted. And so the, the idea of this isn't so much simplifying, this is forcing it to look like what we wanted it to be. And forcing it to look like that is quite tricky, but we can get there if we use our intuition and we practice our algebra. Okay? 
So, I hope you found that useful. Uh, remember to like and subscribe for more videos from Advanced Maths. And you can also check out advancedmaths.com for more videos like this. You may also want to check out our other Grade 7 Plus exam focus videos uh, in the playlist linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Good luck in your exams. And bye for now.